Hello everyone. My name is Dr. Divan and welcome to skyda.com. Topic of the lecture today is brucellosis. In this lecture, we're going to talk about the different outlines that are given here one by one with every minute detail. So first of all, we're going to start with brucellosis. In brucellosis, we're going to talk about what brucellosis is. What is the causative organism, whether it's a virus, whether it's a bacteria or whether it's any other organism in bacteria, whether it's gram positive or gram negative bacteria. Next time, we're going to talk about the etiology of uh, brucellosis. Uh, what's the causative organism and what's the mode of transmission? How does this organism get inside your body? And what's the other host of this organism? From where does we get it? What's the basic host of this organism? How does it get to us? What are those four modes of transmissions through which brucella gets inside a human body? Next on, we're going to talk about which kind of macrophages will be activated, which kind of neutrophils will be activated, what kind of immunity comes into the play, whether it's going to be innate immunity or humoral response. Next on, we're going to talk about how these phagosomes are of no use in the treatment or in the, the body response against the brucella infection. We're going to talk about in detail about the pathogenesis, how all of these factors are coming into the play, how all of these factors are unable to combat with this kind of pathology. Next on, once we know about its origin, when we, once we know about its mode of transmission, once we know about different organs does it manifest in, what different organs does it affect, we're going to talk about the clinical features of it and most of these clinical features will be coming from uh, those or organs which are being affected. We're going to talk about different clinical features and in those clinical features we're going to talk about these three in specific that how are they related to brucellosis, how is endocarditis related to brucellosis, how is lymphocytic meningoencephalitis related to brucellosis. So we're going to talk about their relation. Next on we're going to talk about diagnosis. We're going to talk about how do we diagnose a patient which is suffering from this kind of pathology. Obviously, we'll start from the history. Uh, we'll talk about what points in history you look for, what's point, what points in history to ponder at. And next on, once you're done with the history, what kind of laboratory test you go for. We're going to talk about PCR, serologies and isolations and different kind of diagnostic modalities. And then once we're done with that, we're going to go and uh, find about the biopsical findings. What is going to be the findings in the Brucellar case? Regarding biopsy, what do you look for? What do you find in the biopsy? Next on, you go for the radiological manifestations because patient is going to have these back aches, these back problems. You have to differentiate on the radiological manifestation regarding brucellosis versus tuberculosis. Now, what kind of uh, uh, vertebra are being affected in brucellosis? What kind of vertebra or what vertebra are being affected in the cases of tuberculosis? and all of these other factors, which will include compressions and canals and deformities and recoveries. We'll talk about all of them in detail and we'll do a comparison between them so that you might get the idea that what uh, kind of uh, pathology brucellosis causes in the back or in the spine of the patient. Next, I'm gonna talk about the treatment options of the patient, the what antibiotics are specific for gram-negative cocci or this organism specifically, we're going to talk about why these antibiotics are very important for the treatment. Next one, for the adults, there's a treatment gold standard. We're going to talk about all of these in detail. Next one, we're going to talk about the prophylaxis for all of those people which are working in veterinary systems, those doctors which are working in veterinary systems, for those uh, microbiologists which are working in the laboratory and coming in contact with these organisms on a daily basis. When we talk about what kind of treatment can they take as a prophylaxis once they have been exposed minorly or majorly to this pathogen. Next one, we're going to talk about how do we prevent this disease from happening? How do we prevent this pathology? And in the prevention, we're going to talk about how vaccinations and testings and control methods and immunization come into the play and stop this pathology from progressing. So for watching this complete video and the variety of lectures, thousands of lectures which vary from anatomy, physiology, pathology, pharmacology and leading to medicine and surgery, uh, please subscribe to skyler.com. It contains uh, a free trial for you for which you can uh, get used to this kind of method and teaching. So thank you for watching skyler.com.